Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking in. Happy Mother's Day. Happy belated Mother's Day, guys. All those mothers who are struggling, all those wannabe mothers, all those fathers who are also mothers at the same time, I salute you. Thank you so much for clicking in. Thank you for coming back again to check on me. I really, really appreciate my new subscribers. You are always welcome. For those who haven't subscribed kindly, subscribe. Hit on this notification bell. This one. <laughs> Hit on this notification bell so that every time I upload a new video, you'll be among the first people to be notified. No insults as usual, guys. No insults. Okay? We are simply here to agree and disagree, analyze, and also learn. We are here to check the world in their lenses. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, in their lenses. Okay, guys, I was in Argentina today, checking what is happening in the streets of Argentina. I saw this crazy man living in a bus. I was really still listening to that story. And then one of our lazy gang members wrote me like, Carol, do you know what is happening in Yabahonse? <laughs> Lazy gang members, I always tell you, you guys, you are also my eyes. I love you to the moon and back. I love you, like for free. I got a message. Check what's happening in your bahons. Uncle Mo is very angry. He's backing and stuff. And I'm like, why is Uncle Mo backing? It seems like he was backing to his wife. I was like, mm, Maybe it's a Mother's Day gift or what? Because it's Mother's Day and on this on these streets, people have been talking about their mothers and their wives. Their mothers and their wives. People have been like, you know, congratulating them. So I was like, Uncle Mo with the wife. Okay, maybe it's about Mother's Day or what? Let me check it out. And why is he talking in his language? So I went and I clicked on Uncle Mo. Guess what was happening in Yabahonse on Mother's Day, guys? On Mother's Day. Antinenda pandele, ndeni pandele nchukwe ni maliza video yangu kando. Juu ata ni kiamia mama kwa diski ya kamera. Ataaki. Ah ah, taatora nene wewe. Wewe ndakwa na pandele sita esana na wewe. Waje mimi pamba na video zangu kivi yangu. Eh sindi na kambi ya toka. Akini wakati pesa sita kujuta niomba. Akini kuni saidi utaki. Guys, did you hear that click? Did you hear the way Uncle Mo clicked? Like, hey, it was tough. You know, like, I could really feel it. You know, that click from a man, it means that this man is very upset. Like, really upset. But according to what he's saying, it's not even something to upset him. According to what he is saying. He, is say, he was telling his kid to move the other way. And he was telling this kid that even if I tell your mom to come and help me, even holding the camera for me, she doesn't want. And then the lady said something, you know, from afar. I couldn't hear exactly what she said. I could hear her voice. And then Uncle Mo said, yeah, you should move. You people move out of the way. Because every time I tell you to hold the camera for me, you don't want to help me. But when the money will come, you'll be asking me for this money. And then I don't know what happened. He was standing there for a very long time looking at them. He really wants to say something, but he couldn't because the camera is on. <laughs> and then he just turned and he clicked. Like he was very, very, very angry with this woman, you know. <laughs> this is what was happening in Yabahonse. I know people asked me, 
what is happening with Ankomo? Why is he angry? What is he saying? That is what exactly was saying. Ankomo is saying that his wife is not helping him. She doesn't want to help him, even to hold a camera for him. Mm -mm. She's not cooperating, this lady. She's not cooperating, you know. She doesn't want to help Ankomo on anything. So this makes Ankomo very angry because by the end of the day, she also wants the money. So if you know that this is what your husband is doing for you people to get money, to help you do all these things that he has done, imagine this woman has not been around for a very long time. She just came back the other day after Uncle Mo had finished the house, finished the house and everything is when now she's coming back. And even seeing and knowing that this is what Uncle Mo is doing right now, or this is what he has been doing for us to get all this property. She still doesn't want to help him. And this is making Uncle Mo feel very, very angry. You know, he couldn't hide it on the camera. Uncle Mo, I don't know. He, he should he should be knowing how to edit or stuff. I mean, he would have removed that thing. But at some point, I feel like Uncle Mo just wanted to send this message out there. Because people were like nagging him. When he was doing construction, people were like, Uncle Mo, where's your wife? Uncle Mo, bring back your wife. Bring back your wife. Bring back your wife. People were even advising him because I know there are people that talk to Uncle Mo directly. There are people that Uncle Mo also calls and talk to them directly. For a fact, that one I know he does. And people will like be advising him like, don't be like so and so. Bring back your wife and your kid and stuff. Then he has brought the wife back. I did that video the other day. I didn't know. Like people are congratulating him, telling him it's good to keep your family out of the screens and stuff. Oh, congratulations. So your wife came back because when they were eating outside there, the wife was passing and the camera caught her. And that is how we knew that this lady came back. But now, guys, the lady came back, but she's not even interested, you know, like to help this man. You know, as much as she has come back and she has seen a very big transformation. Imagine from that moment when they were still in that muddy, muddy house. Guys, if you remember those videos that Marwa was doing with Uncle Mo, there's this video that Marwa did with Uncle Mo in the village. That time when Uncle Marwa went to Mo to explain everything, how he started building that house. If you people remember, Mara was just trying to pass the message that it's not um, uh, Michele Ponte who started this project. It was me, 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 Marwa. I'm the one who started this. Uncle Mo, come out. I want you to come out and start explaining these things to people and stuff. If you remember that video. Yeah, the wife was there washing utensils and stuff. The place was dirty. The place was just... But imagine from that situation to this one right now. She has come back in a very neat house. You know, everything. A small fridge is inside. A small toilet is inside. The bedrooms are furnished. I'm saying bedrooms are furnished. I know because I was one of the people who sent those duvets to Uncle Mo. I saw him saying the other day that he doesn't have a bed. I was like, hey, Uncle Mo. <laughs> those times when you were sending... Those things. Anyway, let me not even talk about it. I, I it was not intentional. I don't want I don't want to send stuff to people and then I come out talking about it. But the, at some point, I also had him saying in one of his videos that he doesn't have beddings. Actually, when I had already sent him, like, was it for three, three set of duvets and some bed sheets, six bed sheets and stuff. But he, he will just come out again. You know, when you do some things in, in privacy, you tell him like, like this one, you know, you don't need to talk about it. He will just keep quiet, but he will go back again to his audience and tell the audience, I don't have the bed sheets. I need more blankets. I need more bed. I need more stuff. But the inside people who always talk to him, they know because sometimes they send him things, but they don't want to be publicized. Anyway, what was I saying? This lady came back when the house is already furnished. The beddings like they're the best. I'm saying this because I understand where Uncle Mo is sleeping right now. 
I know the colors of the bed sheets is using. <laughs> Unless if he decided to sell them, I don't know. The house is furnished. The kitchen was nice. The dining room was nice. The bedroom for the do their daughter is very nice. The sitting room, you guys, you saw it. You know, everything, even the place they were sent, that cupboard that they did, it's full. You know, the, the lady is enjoying life. She couldn't even have imagined that she could come back to us, to that kind of place. But imagine, at the end of the day, she doesn't even want to help Uncle Mo. <laughs> Guys, I don't know. I don't know. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about this lady. Let me know what you think about Uncle Mo uh, feeling upset about this issue. Should he just ignore her and continue with his work and leave her alone? Because according to what I see, it, it's like Uncle Mo is also trying to fix this lady into this game. But the lady is not buying it. You know, if someone is not for some something, would you push it? Guys, what do you think? Maybe you can advise Uncle Mo on that video. You can go back in the comment section and advise him like, leave her alone. You just do your thing. Be a man, you know. Since you are a responsible guy and doing everything, be a man. Just do your work, concentrate on your work, focus on your work. When the money comes, it's your responsibility to make sure that your wife and your kid have what they need. You know, they don't have to necessarily help you in the filming so that now you can give them some money for ABCD, you know, <laughs> because that is how Uncle Mo portrayed it. You know, like you are refusing to help me here, 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 and here. And then when the money comes, you will want it. See, if it's my husband's job to do whatever he's doing to provide for his family, why should I be in it? Like, if I really if I really don't like maybe what he's doing, I'm not interested in what he's doing, whatever it is, whatever it is. By the end of the day, it is his responsibility to make sure that we have what we need as a family, right? You guys, you should go back and advice uncle mo maybe on that one because me if i start talking about this thing uncle mo i don't know he will come on me if you remember last time the man was barking the man had headache the whole day the man was he did not even eat the man was doing live videos premiering videos premiering the man was walking on the streets going up and down crying carol 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 talking carol carol <laughs> Eh? Maybe we should go back and talk to him on that video. Uh, you can comment on the comment section and advise him. And maybe you can just tell him we, we came from Carol. Carol told us to come and advise. What do you think, guys? Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Now, I want to go back to Argentina right, right now because I've already addressed this issue. I was on the streets of Argentina. Marwa was there moving around, guys. And I just want to bring some comments from that video. That's what we are going to talk about. The comments. Remember the keyboard reactors, eh? They're always there advising him. Let us read these comments before we proceed, guys. Listen to this, guys. This is what this person said, okay? Marwa, you are doing well, but please take your time to pronounce the words. And you will suggest, you will sir get to them right i don't know what that meant we are not perfect and spanish is not your mother tongue but please try to perfect your pronunciation of words even if you are reading in syllables until you get it right this person is trying to tell mara listen you are on the streets and people there they speak a lot of spanish but remember guys mara said before he even traveled to Argentina, even when he was in America, he was telling people that he speaks a lot of languages. I don't know, he said seven or eight of them, Spanish being one of them. And he said that he speaks Spanish very well. But I've noticed when he's on the streets, someone will be talking to him and he'll be like, okay, okay, okay. I thought when you are speaking Spanish, you have to say, see, si, right? See, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to me like when I was in Egypt, even when I go back, I still understand that language. You know, there's a, there's a way Egyptians and most of the, our African Arabic, it's different from Middle East Arabic. 
you know there's morocco there's um there's egypt there is south uh, southern north no there is egypt there is northern sudan there is morocco there is algeria all these african arabic countries yeah their arabic is different from the one from middle east that's one thing i learned when i went to the middle east i learned a different arabic when i was in this side it was different every time these people speak to you you know and you are like you know agreeing with them you'll be saying like mesh 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 that's to say yes yes okay okay mesh you know so it's all about mesh 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 when you go to the middle east it's different it's aywa type type aywa type those people who know arabic on the streets are many the people who even in the the people who are even in the middle east they watch me they tell me that they are watching me from qatar saudi arabia bahrain uh uae yeah i do have these people you can attest to that what i'm saying right if i'm wrong let me know but i'm not wrong on that one i know because i've been there i know when you go to the middle east it's different when you go back to africa it's different the people in africa they speak a different language so every time i go and revisit these places it's so easy like for me to catch up with what they're saying especially when it comes to a point where you're just agreeing with them you know it's just easy like if it's yeah mesh 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 aywa aywa taib taib aywa you know so i'm looking at maro and he's like okay okay and i'm like why can't you just say c c c you see you are with them and you said that you understand this language very well and you are there with them and you want to make these people also feel like they understand you so it's like you know with the language you understand guys so i'm like <clears throat> every time i want to go back to north africa I feel so nice. I start preparing myself. The moment I arrive, even from the airport, when they speak to me, I'll be like, you know, rolling with them. There's a way we speak our Swahili here in Kenya, which is also different from the Swahili in Uganda. Ugandans, they mostly speak Luganda. They usually don't speak. They don't learn Swahili. Remember, guys, Swahili is a language we learn in school. Okay. Mostly in Uganda, they don't do Swahili. They say that they... Swahili is, is only um Swahili is only taught in Muslim schools and in the army but the rest they don't learn Swahili in Kenya we learn Swahili you know like from a younger stage so when we speak our Swahili here and then we go and find someone in Uganda who speaks Swahili it's very totally different so for you to understand to understand each other you also have to learn their swahili that is how it happened every time i could hear them saying stuff and i'll be like what did he say what did he mean so i have to catch up immediately with what they are saying actually that is the beauty of traveling guys let me tell you the beauty of traveling <laughs> it's not only maro who is traveling some of us even my keyboard reactors they are travelers it's only that they don't show it on camera most of us have traveled it's only that it happened we, we were not on youtube that we could show these things but we do understand and that is the reason we are here following these people because we are comparing their travels and our travels you know we are not here because we are haters we are not here because we are jealousy the way people put it out there you know we are, we are here because we are learning something like if he happens to go to a country where i was before i'll be very much interested to know what is happening there right now did things change you know i used to learn every time i go to a country first of all i need to know everything about their political status that was my number one thing that is my number one thing because politics they rule you know every time i go to a country i want to know everything about their political situation their leadership situation the rules of the country the laws you know before i get to the food culture shock those small small things that most youtubers talk about you know for me i'm in history i want to know the history 
of this country what happened which ruler was here then what happened you know when there was war what I, those are the things that i'm always interested in and that is why guys when i was in egypt i was going to visit those places where they bury the where they keep the bodies of the pharaohs when you go to that place to that museum the tour guide will be like telling you the history from the beginning they'll be showing you all the bodies those they, they call them what mummies they'll be showing you all those mummies and their names when they were born and stuff it is so interesting guys it is so interesting anyway let me go back to argentina <laughs> Let me go back to Argentina. This is what this guy told Amaro, okay? When you're learning their language, guys, sometimes, and you are teaching other people who are following you. You know me, when I was doing my thing, I used to document it and I used to store those videos somewhere else, okay? I can't get the password to that place where I can't, I, I've been trying to retrieve those videos. I can't get to them. I forgot the password to that channel. Remember guys, by then we used to have YouTube without Gmail. We could do YouTube with Yahoo accounts, if you remember. Yeah, so my YouTube was with a Yahoo account. Right now you cannot open that YouTube with a Yahoo account. Okay, so the videos are just there. I can't retrieve them. Anyway. That's a story of another day. We want to go to the next message where this man was telling Maro something. Maro was moving in the streets. And then he came across some place where people were donating. If you remember, if you saw that video. Or if you haven't, go and check it. You know, I'm just sending you there for free. He always sends people to me also for free. <laughs> <laughs> he was moving in the streets and then he came across a place where people were donating. And then he was reading all those things. Guys, maybe we can check this out before we, we go on. But this is what this person told Amarwa. He said, Mr. Mutua took you to one of the satellites of the Salvation Army in the U.S. Goodwill. Here, you are in the warehouse itself. The warehouse of, you know... <laughs> <laughs> these are the same things you get from the donation areas of people who have passed away or just donating yeah so people are donating at some point some clothes some shoes and everything everything marwa got close to that place where people were donating do you know what marwa did marwa ran away he said um I, I need to run away because of that music guys i don't want copyright i don't want copyright i'm running away i was like marwa I think this was the best place where you can even donate your shoes. Yeah? And maybe just one pair of your clothes. It might help, you know? So what are you really showing us, guys? Let's listen to this. So technically what's happening here is you can come and you can come and uh, donate. I guess that's what that event is all about right there. See, like that lady's going. You can come donate some stuff here. Especially books, libros, those are books, comida, food, ropa, amor, and love. See, people have donated some stuff. You see right there. I'm running away from the music. I can't stay here so long. So this is a local weekend. Yeah, Maro had to run away. <laughs> Maro had to run away from music, you know. Music for Marwa is just something else. Marwa is allergic to music. Marwa cannot go close to where music is do you know why because he will get a copyright strike but do you know why also because marwa does not edit his videos getting a copyright is not the issue you can do the video but you can remove there's a there's an option where you can remove that music in your video it's so simple just getting copyright it doesn't mean that now your video won't no 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 come on please there's a way you can just edit your video and remove that music but unfortunately marwa is not the kind of a person who edits his videos okay so he had to run away but not only for music but also because the donations were being done there you know marwa could not remove even one of his clothes and just say oh guys i think i will bring just one pair of my clothes and i will put it here anything whatever it is you know 
or even wanting to get close to that place and he doesn't have necessarily to you know to put all that music in his video he can go with the camera as he speak to us and mute the music and everything and oh my god anyway i don't know what i'm really saying what i know is that marwa does not edit his videos he doesn't have time to edit his videos maro is the kind of a person who will just be moving around with his camera he comes sit down upload done He's getting ready to go to the club. He doesn't have time to waste, you know. He said that in the video. He said that, I think I'll, I'll be coming to the club because where I stay, that street, the whole street is just like a club. Many clubs are there and people are just clubbing on the streets and stuff. Why? Marwa is living his life because clubbing is his life, you know. If you remember those videos that he did when he's in Colombia, when he was doing whatever stuff that he was doing with those young girls. And now, by now, we all know that Maro is so much into these small girls, yeah? So being in Argentina and people are clubbing on the streets and doing all stuff, all sort of nonsense and, you know, all those things that he said that he wants people to come and do in his house, in his compound when he finished, you know, his house. They're happening. This is his life. This is what he wants. At his age, Maro, someone said, <laughs> hey, guys, someone told me in the comment section that he could, he could notice Maro's hair, you know, is turning white. Someone was commenting that, and I was like, um, like in my family, we do have white hair at an early age. I started having my hair when I was like in my early 20s. Guess how old I am, by the way. Someone asked me that question. I was like, mm, just guess. <laughs> we will get to that, guys. You don't need to worry about that. We will get to that. But in my family, we do have white hairs when we are at our early stages of life. You know, sometimes it's genetics th thing sometimes it's because you're old sometimes i don't know but nowadays even i remember when i was in still in school i could see some kids even some boys small boys with white hair you know so i don't think that's an issue but at the same time marwa have been accused on these streets that he's lying about his age he should be now in his 40s yeah according to some of the information that has been released on these streets so you never know but as much as he's in his 40s marwa is a club guy he's a kind of a person who just wants to go clubbing 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 international clubbing you know that's his thing because marwa likes white girls marwa likes underage girls white underage girls let me put it that way that is his thing so being in argentina and people are clubbing on the streets he's living his life he's living his life you know that is his life if you're waiting for marwa to come back home and marwa get our girlfriend marwa now start courting marwa now it's marriage we are taking the dowry now this is the wedding marwa forget guys forget those are not the kind of signs that maro is showing us maro is just showing us that he's a wild boy even at his age right now he's a wild boy you know in life i feel like there are things that you do when you are in certain age once you are done with them you are like ah, i'm done with that you know at least i've tasted that life i know what it gives you know let me move on to the second one yeah i think i, I, sh I should move on but when it comes to maro he just wants to do the same thing again and again and again and again that is why he's going back to south america south america south america south america <laughs> anyway me i'll be talking about maro i told you guys me maro is here he's listening to me he understands what I'm saying and he knows that now at least I know him better. Maro, you are listening to me. It is okay. Me, I'm saying what I know, what I think because of how you always bring your videos out here. Okay? I'm not guessing about this. All this I'm picking from all the videos that you've been bringing on these streets for a very long time. They show who you are. They just open your nyash like this. We see everything in you through your videos. 
and that is what it is here guys i have a lot to talk about there are some things happening in nyabahonzi about david junior and the other girlfriend hmm. guys i will talk about that in the next video right now let me just close on this one leave your comments down below let me know what you think about this video okay like remember to like and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed click on this notification bell so that every time i upload a new video you'll be among the first people to be notified thank you guys for watching let's meet on the next one